like about this recipe is the fact that it is really versatile. You can sort of add some spinach to it, you could add kale to it, you could add some um, roasted sweet potato. It gets better throughout the day. There is no sound. Okay. <laughs> oh no. Uh, hello. I think you probably can hear us now and you couldn't before. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. We did that last week as well. Oh, that's annoying. We're sure. doing our best. We won't do that again. Right, shall we go from the top? Let's go from the top. Okay. Hello and welcome to Bosch TV. My name's Ian Theesby. This is Henry Firth. Hey, uh, and we are Bosch. Yes, now, we are. Today, we are going to be cooking something utterly delicious for everybody at home. We are cooking Ian's Delightful Dal. Nice. Yeah. I'm excited about this. This is actually one of my favourite recipes uh, from our cookbook number two, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah, yeah, Bish Bash Bosch. Bish Bash Bosch is where this recipe is housed, but we're going to give it to you for free tonight. Yes, we are. Yeah. Of course, it's high protein, so mm -hmm. this is like protein week. All of this week at 6 pm, we're going to be cooking high protein dishes. Um, but I'm going to shut the up, <laughs> sit down, do the buttons, and Ian's going to show you how to cook this tasty dish. Yeah, man. All right, so the first, well, let's just crack straight into it, right? Let's get into it. Like, and okay, so like we said before, we're making a dal, which is a curry, and most curries start with onions, and that's exactly how ours is going to start. I'm going to turn the oven on. We're going to get it to a just a like a oh, yeah, by the way, I cut my finger. <laughs> like, uh, like, I didn't cut my finger like doing preparation or anything. I cut my finger because like the knife was in the wrong place. But anyway, that side. That if you want to know what this fault, is, basically. so it's not my fault, but it's fine. You know, I've got a blue plaster, blue plasters, so you can see it if it gets into the food. But we don't need to worry about that. Anyway, so uh, back of the hand. Make sure that the uh, pan is warming up nicely. And the first thing that's going to go into the pan is a little bit of vegetable oil. Now, if you don't have vegetable oil, that's fine. You could use sunflower oil. You could use rapeseed oil. Uh, canola oil for those of you in the United States, or coconut oil, which gave a really nice silky consistency. But what we've got here, vegetable oil, it's going in, there's about two tablespoons there, boom. Nice and easy. Was well, easy, wasn't it? Yes. By the way, if you are used to this show, you'll notice already, but we've got producer Kathy in my ear, so we can see your questions on both YouTube and Facebook, so do drop them in, and once Ian's shown you this amazing recipe, we'll do a little Q&A at the end, or wherever we get a good moment. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of you have been cooking along at home, which we greatly appreciate, and if um, you are cooking along at home, now's a great chance to start chopping up your onions and getting it to about this kind of consistency. So what we're looking at is well chopped, nicely kind of reasonably diced, but not like super, super fine. So I'm going to pop this straight into the pan. We're going to do it nice and slow. There we go. Very good. Now, we've said this a couple of times, but I'm going to repeat myself because I think it's a really good trick. Now, once you're cooking onions as a base, the best thing to do to eke out the moisture is put a little bit of salt in. And that is what we have here. We use the posh salt, which is the, uh, the kind of sea salt stuff, because it, it grinds through the fingers really nicely. And that is going to help out eke out all the moisture from the onions and get them cooking quicker. So, Henry, should we explain to the people what happened on Friday night? Oh, goodness. Yeah, I mean, I guess we had a few of you there with us, but um, what Ian's alluding to is not only did we cook the vegan fish and chips, mm -hmm. which was good, wasn't it? It was great. Uh, but we had a little, a little after party here in our Bosch kitchen where we wheeled out this table and uh, put in some decks in the same place and then played tunes all night. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was the inaugural Bosch lounge, and we are going to be doing uh, the second Bosch Lounge this Friday. So if you want to come and join with us, then please do. It'll be a lot of good fun. <laughs> right, um, now, for everybody who's cooking along at home, just to let you know that these onions here will probably take around about five to seven minutes. Now, the reason why we're going to cook them for so long and at such a, like a relatively low temperature is because we're trying to caramelize them and we're trying to make them really, really, really... Um, uh, night, like really really nice in terms of the um, like the softness. We don't want bite, we kind of just want them to soften and we want them to caramelize and we want them to create a wonderful base for this, uh, for this lovely dish. But um, we haven't got all the time in the world so what I've done is prepared a bit of a subbin. So I'm going to take this away and bring in the correct onions in. So smooth. So smooth. <laughs> uh, they call them subbins. Um, here is one that we made earlier through the magic of preparation. Mm -hmm. And uh, check it out. Yeah, so basically, as you can see, um, the onions have gone a little bit translucent. They have um, yellowed in colour somewhat, and I can tell you right now, they are 
distinctly sweeter than when we started out before. So yeah, that is exactly the kind of consistency you're after. Now, I would just want to get this pan up to the correct speed because it's a brand new pan. So give me one minute. Um, and it's going to be good. Guys, um, I want to hear like what you've been thinking about um, these lives that we've been doing. Uh, like Henry said before, Ka producer Kathy, like um, our friend and confidant, and also she's been with us three years, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, like almost as long as we've been running Bosch. Yeah. She's been here. We're in Clapham, she's in Greenwich, but she's in Henry's ear. So if you've got any questions, do fire them over and we'll get them answered. We've got to give a little bit of a shout out, Ian, at that point to both Charlie and Nat, yes, who are the like unsung heroes in this live scenario yeah. of Team Bosch. They're with us every day as well. They're just not on the end of the phone when we do our lives. That's right. Yeah, it's a it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a team affair. But as you can as you know, we're quarantined like everyone. But there yeah. we go. Right. So look, check 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 out the pan now. You can see that the, there's a little bit of simmer happening. You can smell the onions. They smell wonderful. And that is high time now to add the next ingredients into the dish. <clears throat> I'm already excited about this dish. So. Oh, um, We've had it so many times, and honestly, like as far as dolls go, it this has got the best flavour combination I've ever had. So if you are cooking along, either live with us now or at home at a later date, you're going to love it. Okay, so what we've got here, um, this is garlic, but what we've done, it's three cloves of garlic, and what we've done is we've grated it with a fine grater, just to sort of make sure that it's as um, it's kind of small as possible. So I'm going to pop that straight into the pan. You know, give it a little bit of a helping hand, scrape it in, and there it will sit. The next thing I've got here is about three centimetres worth of ginger. Again, it's been grated, it smells amazing, it's super duper healthy, and um, it's just going to, well, complement that garlic perfectly, isn't it? Absolutely. And it kind of smells like we're in curry zone now, right? Oh, yeah. The garlic, when the garlic goes in, you could be making an Italian. Yeah, you could. But the minute you put the ginger in, there ain't no Italian food with ginger in it. No, it's it anyway. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? Yeah. Goodness, yes. Anyway, um, right, so what we've got here is a bit of spice. If you don't like spice, sub it out. If you do like spice, put more in. These are chilli flakes, and they're going straight in. Now, the last thing we've got, we're using 30 grams of coriander in this recipe, and these are the stems, and they've been finely diced, and they're going into the pan as well. They're going to give um, a really wonderful aromatic flavour, they're going to give colour, and they're not going to be wasted, because a lot of people just throw their coriander stalks away, which is um, a real shame, isn't it? It's is such a shame, and do you know, I quite feel like this trick works in almost any dish where you've got fresh herbs. Yeah, yeah I, I completely agree. Yeah, um, it's very, very important. But I would, if you are going to be using the stems, make sure that you chop them nice and fine. Practice your, um, your knife skills. So uh, right now we can smell, it smells very, very fresh all of a sudden because obviously uh, there's a lot of moisture trapped in those really woody stems and, and here they are doing their thing, smelling wonderfully here. Great question just came in from uh, producer Kathy, Ian, nice. uh, which is about whether we could sub in ginger powder instead of fresh ginger. Uh, I don't see why not. Yeah, I, think I, I think that's fine. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm just nicking a bit of water. Um, okay, so this is a good little uh, trick. When you're cooking and you've got the base and you feel that um, things are a little bit too hot, just to have some water on hand and just pour it in. Yeah, that will, that will help sort of like deglaze the, or glaze the pan a little bit. And, uh, and just kind of let the thing get going. I've forgotten to do the fan. <laughs> Don't worry, I've got you. <laughs> that's, uh, that's annoying. Anyway, so look You'll at this. To do the button. Yeah, that's fine. So this is so good. Like, it smells amazing. That uh, water was a very, very good idea because it's, it's preventing everything from burning, but it's continuing it to cook, or it's uh, allowing it to continue to cook. Um, so yeah, Henry's just getting the fan here now. Um, this is a little trick that we use. Yeah, because obviously we've been doing these recipe videos for a fair old while, and um, the worst thing ever is when steam is hitting the, the lens up here. So, yeah, we've got our fan here, and that's good. And now it smells good, it looks good, and now it's time for the next thing. Yes. Yeah, oh my god. Let's do it. Wow, is that, <laughs> you know, when that like. Whether it's the chilli and the ginger when it hits in the back of the throat. It's so it's insane. It's, it's crazy. That Definitely that chilli. We did that the other day. What recipe was that where you were like... Uh, there, was, there was definitely... What, sweet and sour, wasn't it? Sweet uh, yeah, and sour. I think it was yeah, sweet and sour. Tofu, which we did last week. So spicy, honey. Right, check this out. Now, we have got a little uh, tray of spices. And what we've got here is um, cumin, ground coriander. We've got salt, turmeric, fenugreek 
and garam masala. These are all going to go in individually. I'll pop them in now. So uh, first up, cumin. Second, we've got gr uh, ground coriander, which is a, such a wonderful um, spice. Then I'm going to add a little bit of sweetness, which is the, coming from sugar, quite simply. Loads of garam masala. Uh, there's four teaspoons of that. Next up, we've got a bit of turmeric for wonderful colour. And the last one is, uh, this is the, the spice that I believe gives this dish its authenticity and it's fenugreek. There we go, lovely. So why, why, do, you think, why do you think fenugreek is, uh, is so good in this dish, question one. Question two, uh, could you use fenugreek seeds? Yeah, I think you probably could use fenugreek seeds, definitely. And you the just blitz them up, wouldn't you? Yeah, you could blitz them. Or, yeah. or like, do you know how like, you do with a jira or cumin seeds? You mm. kind of like cook them off in the oil like you would with yeah. mustard seeds and stuff. I thought it would be really cool. But the reason why I think uh, this is so special is because of one of these spices that you don't... It's not like your common or garden uh, spice that you'd find in your spice cabinet. It's not cumin, it's not ground okay. coriander, it's not smoked paprika. It's something that you have to sort of use a little more thoughtfully. So, and it really adds such a wonderful uh, element to the whole dish. It's kind of got that like authentic curry house seal of approval. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And also some vegan ghee would have been really good here as well. Like some vegan ghee. Yeah, yeah, you can get. Thing? Yeah, vegan ghee. It's a uh, vegetable. I've never even heard of that. Yeah, just, I, just vegetable oil. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's it's like it's um, hum, homogen. Is it homogen? Oh, it's like it's like firm. Yes, yeah, like firm. Right. I see. Yeah. Naughty lard, isn't it? You learn something new every day. Right. So um, now, like, let's just take a look at the pan. <laughs> so what we've got here is just um, it's a plethora of wonderful flavour, incredible smells, and this is going to cr create like, trust me, like the best dal going. Um, right, so I'm going to add now these. Now these are dried red lentils. They are a wonderful thing to have in your stock cupboard. They're super duper cheap and this is where the protein is coming from. If any of you have just tuned in, this is Bosch Live. I'm Henry, Ian's cooking yeah. and he is cooking his delightful dal from our second cookbook, Fish Bash Bosch. It's a high protein meal. In fact, we're going to be cooking high protein meals every single night this week mm -hmm. um, and this is absolutely delicious. It's quite funny because a few of you guys might know who we are and you might have followed us for a little while. And some of you might be brand new um, and we had a TV show at the turn of this year. Yeah. It, was, it was called Living on the Veg. It was on ITV which is a terrestrial television ch uh, channel in the United Kingdom and um, well, I got ribbed for always saying things were delightful. <laughs> but in actual fact, we called this dish Ian's Delightful Doll, so I think it's, yeah. it's one of these words that uh, does get used a lot, but it's perfect for this kind of stuff. Well, we both had like funny little uh, yeah. quirks. Yeah, quirks. Really <laughs> so, one that I always do, and still probably do, is next we're gonna. Next we're gonna. When you say that like 10 times in a recipe, it's annoying. Or now we're gonna, whatever. Yeah. And then Ian always goes, one, two, three, yeah. before he does something. One, two, three. And then, and, then, and, yeah, and then our um, uh, d director, she was like, can you stop saying that, please? I was like, okay, yeah, so, um, yeah. Emma, if you're watching, yeah, good tip for not saying that. Yeah. Right, um, okay, so now we've got our, um, we've got our lentils in there, we've got all our spices, we've got our base in there as well, aromatics, and this is, um, this is chopped tomatoes. Top count, then side count. Oh gosh, right, and there we are. So these chopped tomatoes are going in there, it's super cheap, they're like 30p for two of those. Okay. And now I'm just going to mix this through. And as you can see, there's an awful lot of, um, of activity happening in the pan. There's a lot of steam coming off, which means it's quite fiery. So what I'm going to do is the same thing that I did before, and add just a splash of water, just to settle it down a sip. Perfect. Because obviously the, um, the lentils are dry, so they, like beans, are going to need waking up with liquid. So, uh, so there we go. Got that going, nice. And this is uh, such a wonderfully easy recipe, this one. Because mm. now all we have to do is add a couple more bits and we are basically done. It's amazing. Now, if you weren't massively into coriander, um, then we feel your pain. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are just kind of genetically pre undisposed to liking coriander. But coriander, is that the right way around to say it? <laughs> um, lots of you don't like it, basically. Um, look, you could freestyle and maybe try it with parsley. It's not strictly as um, curry y, in our opinion, but it would work. Um, so, parsley would work. You could absolutely just play around with whatever freshness you've got in the garden. Um, I would just not bother and just cook the dal without the curry. curry. Do you know, do you know, I think it, I think I don't know if it's just in season right now, but there's a thing called wild garlic, 
That could be a good thing. Yeah, that work. Yeah, wild garlic could be a vibe. I saw that like for sale in a, in a shop the other day. Wild garlic, and it's one of those things. That if you just walk near a local wood, it will just be there in abundance. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Anyway. But another thing uh, you could add to this dish as well, and we've seen it done before, is, um, you know, we've done it ourselves before, kale or spinach, yeah. you know. Great way to just get greens into your body um, is to chuck it into a curry, and they kind of disappear into nothing, but you still get most of that goodness. Yeah. You should just view this whole recipe as just a baseline for, um, for, for things that you want to do yourself. So what we've got here is um, everything minus two things. So the first thing out of those two is this. This is 500 milliliters of um, vegetable stock. Um, ideally, you'll go for low sodium. Uh, that's what we've gone for here because then you can salt yourself, you know? Right, so there we go. All the way in. That is our uh, stock. And we're not gonna finish that because we need some more liquid. And the liquid to give a wonderful creaminess to the whole dish is this. This is full fat coconut milk. And look at that. Oh man, that looks beautiful. Doesn't that look good? That's like, I don't know, some kind of Salvador Dali. Yeah, it's some kind of art. You'd imagine um, like a, a De Damien Hirst do something. Like that. That's a beautiful wow. thing. And what's, what's even better is the fact I'm about to stir it in. So check this out now. Now you'll see it's very liquidy right now. Um, you'll pro if you're cooking along with us at home, which we hope that you are, uh, you're probably thinking, Jesus, there's a lot of liquid in here. But don't worry, because the next thing you're going to do is let this bad boy simmer. You're going to let it simmer for around about 25 to 40 minutes. That's, I know that's quite a, a big kind of chunk of time in between. Um, but yeah, basically what you want to do is, uh, is just let it simmer until it looks and feels ready. So look at that. Check that out. How good is that? I mean, it looks incredible. It certainly looks like uh, simmering is needed because it doesn't look much like a curry right now. No, oh, yeah. What's going to happen in terms of what will they expect to see? So what's going to happen now, you're going to simmer that down and all that liquid is just basically going to evaporate off. It's going to get thicker. The colours are going to get richer and deeper. And obviously there's going to be a lot less of it by the time we've finished. So now, ladies and gentlemen, is a perfect time to put the lid on and take this to one side. Why? Because we have a sub in. Hey, through the magic of life, we are gonna switch that one out and go forward in time about 20 minutes. If you are cooking along at home, of course, um, you'll wanna keep cooking and let that simmer away for, what was it, 20, 20 or so minutes? Uh, between 25 and 35 25 minutes. 25 and 35 yeah, minutes. 25 and 35 minutes. So check this out now. So what we've got here is, um, we have got our, our dart, and as you can see, it's a, it's a damn sight thicker. It looks like there's not much in there, and the reason why is because we already served some up here, okay? So what you're going to be left with is, is more than enough food for four people. But for me, that is just looking almost perfect, but there's one thing missing, and that one thing that is missing is coriander. Kathy, what was that question again? Uh, could you use different kinds of lentils? Uh, yeah, I reckon yellow, yellow lentils or, or dried poi lentils. But I think, to be honest, the, the best ones we've worked with with this are the red ones. But I mean, if you can't find any red ones and you, or you've only got a certain amount of lentils in your cupboard at home, try it. I guess it's like quarantine, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's the point about dal. It's always got a kind of lentil base, and um, they're going to last for ages on your shelves. So uh, mm. yeah, work with what you've got. That's it. Get creative, baby. Right, so here we go. We've got uh, the coriander that like, we had stalks before. Now we've got the actual coriander leaves that I pulled off earlier on. And I'm just going to sprinkle this in, okay? We're just going to sprinkle in at will. That's probably more than enough. And now I'm going to fold this through. So it's just going to retain some of that lovely aromatic flavor. It's going to give a really nice color, as you can see. And it just kind of just makes the whole dish, it just takes up a notch. It, like visually, it's a lot more appealing now than it was. That is done. So what we'll do now is do an end shot. Yay! Yay. Exciting. <laughs> I love this dish because it's kind of like um, a hug in a bowl. We wrote that in the little description, uh, but it's true. This is a perfect thing to have on like a quite kind of chilled out evening when you want a bit of a snuggle. Soup isn't quite filling enough, but you don't necessarily want a full on curry. And actually you don't need to serve this with anything at all. You can just use um, you, you could have a, a naan bread or a roti, uh, which we put in bish bash squash, 
You could have some rice, but also it just works great on its own as well. That's absolutely right. Yeah, roti. They rotis were good. Yeah, man, so yeah. good. But we decided uh, to omit the roti from today's recipe because we didn't want um, we don't want to bore you guys with too much stuff. Yeah? <laughs> so I think I think one really solid recipe is enough. So what we're going to do, just for the benefit of our video, is this. We've got my spoon here, and it's going in, and then I'm going to pull okay, it out to the left. Cam or side cam. So you can go start at the top and then flip to the left as I'm coming out. Okay. Yeah. Three, two, one. And then we go up and out. Okay. So that is <laughs> the shot that we needed in order to do the next shot, which we're going to do now. This cool. is a little bit of behind the scenes uh, trickery in terms of how we do our boss videos because we'll always want to like have things moving from one shot to another. Um, so what that will do is that that spoon that Ian just moved out in that direction will now come into the next shot. A little bit of kind of, it's almost like food theatre. Yeah, that's exactly, like yeah, it is. It's exactly what it is. Let me just get a cloth so I can do that, um, that table. Down. Just a reminder, if you have just tuned in, um, Ian is cooking, I'm Henry, we're Bosch, this is Bosch Live. And we're going to be here at 6 p.m. every week this week cooking you protein food. It's all plant-based, it's all high protein, kind of low refined carbohydrates or no refined carbohydrates. So you know what? You could just call it gym food. Gym food! Yes! yes. Who's Jim? Uh, who's Jim? Who's Jim? Uh, but also just tasty food um, that's, that's good for you and will support a healthy plant-based diet. So if you, let's go down to the rice so I can line up, here we go, uh, and the side. Side E. So side cam, I just need to so shift this the middle, I'll move side cam as needed. Oh yeah, okay. So if I shift this, we don't want that in the way. Sorry guys, this is, a, this is definitely work in motion. Right, so if I pop that down, that's perfect. Henry, is that good on the side E? Oh, lovely. That is looking decent. Okay, no, nice, perfect. Right, so that's, that's, that's good placement there. That looks nice. I'm happy with that. Yep. Uh, there you go. Now, uh, we've got our curry, like we said before. Uh, we've got our rice, and uh, notice we're using brown rice because it's uh, infinitely healthier, and it's just nice for colour as well, I find. Right, so, are you ready? Uh, dude, I'm so ready You're for this. You're so ready, here we go, let's do this. So, we're top gonna put, cam. we're gonna go top cam, and then, mm. And then into side. And then side, yeah. okay. Three, two, one, and. Top in and side. Look at that, streamlined. That looks beautiful. Doesn't that look good? That's one of the things about food, is like, you eat first with your eyes. Yeah, you really so do. beauty is important. A little bit of presentation, even having a posh bowl like that's pretty <laughs> cool. Right, I'm gonna go in with another spoon, and when Kat is doing her edit, it's going to be punched in, so you get that unctuous kind of slipperiness. There we go. Lovely. That's good. Now, uh, oh, the next right. thing. So tasty. We're on 24 minutes. Oh, mate, we've got more than enough time. <laughs> Um, in the meantime, thoughts about naan bread. Uh, what's, you've been asked, some of you have been asking about naan bread. We've got a roti recipe, if you just search the web for Ian's Delightful Dal and Roti, mm -hmm. you'll find that. It might not be on our website, it might be on another website. We have also done garlic and peshwari naans. They were epic. I'm not going to go through the recipe now, um, but it's either in the Bosch cookbook. I think we've done Bosch. It's, yeah, it's in Bosch, yeah. but yeah. I think it's probably online too. So just search Bosch naan, yeah. um, but you can totally do it. Oh man, it's so, so good. It really like, ludicrously good. You should definitely try it out. <laughs> right, so now I've got a bit of mango chutney to add to the, uh, to the basic dish. So, not mango chutney isn't everybody's cup of tea. I personally love it because it's nice and sweet. It's got a tiny little bit of spice there as well. I don't know if you can see that actually on the cat. Here we go. A little bit like that. Then, because obviously we've got a little bit of coriander on the left, we want to save some. We're just going to sprinkle some over. Nice, nice, nice. And then last but not least, a couple of these little bad boys in the side. These are poppadoms and boomer. Nice. That is ready. And now we have to do our end spoon shot, yeah? So uh -huh. we're the spoon shot. Three, two, one, and... Oh no, that's, oh, a, oh. that's a spinning <laughs> bowl, so I'm going to have to hold the bowl first. Give me two seconds. One, two, three, and... Look at that, that looks absolutely gorgeous. And up and away. And here it is. Shall we taste it? Mate, I've been waiting for you to say that for the last 25 minutes. Here we go. Oh! Ian's Delightful Doll is pretty damn good. And one thing that we didn't do 
is we didn't season as we go, but that's fine because there was quite a decent amount of salt in the base of the onions. I'm oh my goodness, in. this is tasty, bro. Going in. And it's, it's, got, it's got a nice amount of spice as well. Those, those chili peppers uh, were, were not, no joke, man. I've got quite a lot of rice in there. Yeah, why not? Mmm. Mmm. Mm. 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 So, mm. yeah, mm. so obviously we read the comments that you guys leave. What do you reckon? Wow. Yeah, really tasty. It's got like a gentle heat. Mm -hmm. You can see that all of those different spices went in there because they're all quite nicely balanced. Um, it definitely tastes very curry housey. Yes. And I like that that green zing freshness of that coriander on top. Good, 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 good. Uh, mm. Now, you guys <coughs> have been really great to us um, as we've been doing these lives. We've asked you questions like, what would you like to see us cook? And we have, um, you've, you've told us and we've done that. So you said you wanted to see more protein. You also said you wanted to see some um, store covered recipes because obviously like not everything's in the supermarket even though it's getting markedly better than it was a couple of weeks ago. So that recipe I think like covers both those bases. Yeah. Protein and stock covered. Well, it's kind of, you could also say it's a fridge raid recipe. Yeah. Because if you've got basically any veg that can handle a kind of a roast or a fry in there, um, then you can get them in here as well. You could pop courgettes in there, mm -hmm. you could chuck some peppers in there, you could chuck some squash in there, as long as you uh, cooked it for long enough for it to soften. Yeah. You can pretty much add anything to that dish. Yeah, you can like turn it into your own doll. So it's yeah. not Ian's doll for doll, it's, it's, it's whoever you are. No, you it's it's yeah. a gift. That is a gift. Um, talking about gift, should we shout down Do the- Do we have any housemates who want a quick bite? Yes, okay, right. so I'll get a couple of spoons for them. Also. Amazing. You, you yeah. just come on down if, if it's all good. Um, you may or may not know, but we live with uh, my fiance MJ and Darren, our housemate, uh, and every now and again they pop down and try our food. So I think that's going to happen right now. If they're quick, yeah, sorry, guys. Oh, otherwise it won't happen. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, pop them in our ear and, um, and we'll give, do a quick little QA shortly. Nice. Here's MJ. <laughs> Come back, Darren. Okay, oh, he's probably uh, chilling. Hi, everyone. Here's MJ. Hello. Go for it. Have a go. This and pop is gums. Ian's delightful oh, bar. I've yeah. had this a few times, so I've got high expectations. No, really. Mm -hmm. It's uh, oh, I, I, I'm kind of. It's one of them where I'm like, yeah, I just fancy tucking into that half of my dinner. It's so good. Yeah, mm. it is really good. Delish. What do you reckon? So good. Yeah. So so good, especially with the mango chutney. Yeah. Oh man, a little bit of mango chutney mm. goes such a long way. Yeah, really beautiful. Mm. Marks out of ten? Nine and a half. No! Yeah. Hey, you're giving out a lot of yeah. nine and a half at the moment, aren't you? It's all very good. Yeah, it's mm. pretty solid then. Yeah, really good. Yeah. It doesn't taste naughty either. It's like a yeah, it's, healthy... It's a healthy um, thing. I think it is a healthy thing. It's super healthy. Yeah. And yeah. It's, the, it's the beginning of protein week as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. What a way to start. Mm. All right, I'll let you Thank come you, Andre. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nice um, one. Now, before we get into the Q&A, just a gentle reminder, this is Boss. We're Boss. This is Boss Live. Do hit subscribe or like if you haven't already. And the little notification bell will mean that you get noised up when we go live so you can hang out with us every day, which would be cool. Yeah, absolutely. And if you want to cook along with us this week, we're going to be going live every single uh, night at 6 p.m. BST and it's all about protein. Tomorrow we've got like a colder dish. This is a super ho uh, hot one. So yeah, it's gonna be really, really nice. You should check it out. All the ingredients that you need to buy are on the website. Nice. Uh, so Richard and Gemma, uh -huh. who were there at the uh, the rave on Friday night, oh, yeah, uh, in this exact position, are asking your favorite plant-based protein source. My favourite plantain. Oh, do you know I kind of have a plant plant-based smoothie every single morning, and I pop some plant-based protein powder in there. So, so actually, protein powder. Yeah, and what's protein. that made from? Um, uh, to be honest, I think it's I think it's got hemp. I think it's hemp, uh, hemp, hemp is the main thing. Nice, nice but yeah, nice. super delicious. It's really nice. Amazing. And mine would have to be. I mean, it was tofu week last week, so uh, anything that resembles tofu is good with me. Um, particularly tempeh, mm. which is kind of the more evolved, um, almost more. Whole Foodsy version of tofu. It's got a little nutty texture, weird little taste, but good. Yeah, it looks weird, but it tastes good. Right, that's it. And yeah. that, one question, 30 minutes. Yeah. Unless, Kathy, one more question. Oh, okay, she's, yep, she's in my ear. She's in your ear, what she's saying. She's Were we self trained or how did we teach ourselves to cook? 
Yeah, both self-trained, neither of us went to culinary school, and I think we both learned from uh, just trial and error, just uh, becoming really into cooking, and just like kind of learning as we went. Uh, we made a lot of mistakes on the way, but now we are certainly better than we were, but we're net, like, I find with cooking, it's like medicine, you practice it, you just get better with every single uh, dish you cook. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't think you ever finish. It's a journey. Yeah. We, we, we like to think of ourselves as well, well taught, self taught, Home cooks. We put us in a kitchen with a hundred covers to serve. We'd probably flounder. Yeah. Uh, but put us <laughs> in our kitchen with you to serve via video cameras, and uh, hopefully we're doing all right. We hope you've been enjoying it. This yeah. has been fun, hasn't it? It has been a lot of good fun. Yeah. Uh, it's a good way to kick off the week. A really tasty dart. There we go. Yeah. All right, signing out for now. See you tomorrow, hopefully. Ian, remind us what you cooked. Uh, we cooked Ian's delightful dal. It's from Bish Bash Bosch. It's a Delightful dish. It even says it in the, in the title. <laughs> um, and if you like this, you're going to love tomorrow. So we'll see you again tomorrow, 6 p.m. BST, Bosch Live, YouTube, Facebook. See you soon. See you later. Take care, guys. Bye bye.